I made a video on performance tuning a couple of days ago, and a lot of people seem like they like that, so I'm gonna do one more. We have this game here, and the last time I did a performance tuning on the front end, we're gonna try to do it on the server. So I have a node application that runs the actual WebSocket server, and I'm gonna go ahead and just load up a debug terminal. Over here, you can actually see there's a JavaScript debug terminal. And I'm gonna say npm run dev. And what this does is it kicks off a terminal which basically instruments your code. So now that the game is running, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this take performance profile button. I'll click my server.js file. I'll do CPU profile. I'm gonna say manual. And I'm just gonna let it run for a couple of uh, seconds, maybe like 10 seconds, 20 seconds. And what it does is it basically keeps a cumulative sum of all the different functions and how long they took to run. So I think that's been long enough. Let's just go ahead and click stop. And before we dive into actually optimizing this game, I do want to say that I have an agentic jumpstart course I'm working on. If you want to become a 10 times developer using an LLM to code faster and more efficiently, I've been using Cursor and Cloud Code for a while now, and I've learned a lot of tips and tricks along the way. So be sure to join my waitlist if you're interested in uh, purchasing a course that can help you become better at agentic coding. The link will be in the description. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. And then you'll get a nice breakdown of what things are eating up the most of your time or what, what stuff is like the slowest. So going off of this, you should probably start at the top if you can do any optimization. So I have a spatial grid in my game, and it looks like a majority of the time spent is looking up where things live on this grid. But there might also be some low-hanging fruit we can kind of just quickly fix. So for example, get entity by ID. This thing is eating up a ton of time, uh, which makes me wonder if maybe there's a, a bad implementation of how this is happening. So looks like update bear trap is calling get entity by ID. So I'm going to say get entity by ID to try to figure out where this is being called. And then this is being called a couple of places. So it's being called in the client listener, being called in the landmine. It's actually being called in a lot of stuff. So I guess it's used for like looking up who owns the entity. But if you look at this functions implementation, so let's go to the game server. I think this is the entity manager. Um, you'll see that it's basically looping over all the entities, right? And so what you could actually do, I'm gonna use cursor composer one to kind of fix this is we're gonna go and copy this function. And I'm gonna go to plan mode. Can you please refactor this so when an entity is added to the entity manager and removed, we actually keep track of that entity using a map data structure instead of looping over all the entities to find it by ID. Recently, I've been using composer one a lot and also the plan mode. I just find that like this stuff runs so fast and also the plan mode just helps it really understand what it needs to change. Like you don't even have to read through this for the most part, but just running a plan mode off the bat, seems like it actually helps a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run this, and then eventually you should see it start to change the files. And the idea of what this is changing in the Entity Manager is we're gonna keep track of the ID and map it to an entity. When we add an entity, we keep track of it. When we delete it, we keep track of it. I'm not sure why there's a git diff there. There's something going on with Cursor where it's like showing me diffs of stuff that like I haven't reviewed yet, and I can't get it to go away. Like I have 12 different diffs where it's doing diffs on like max health change and other stuff. Like, I don't know how to clear that out. I need to figure it out because it's making me want to just get off cursor at this point, but I'm sure it's just a little bug in their UI. Anyway, that's the overall uh, change in that file, a really, really small change, but it's going to be kind of a big win for this project. So we're going to go ahead and run it again. Let's just go ahead and kick off that performance profile again. I'll do a CPU profile manual, let it run for a little bit. Probably good to just walk around, click some stuff, interact with some items to make sure that you're really stress testing your game. And then let's go back and we're going to stop this. We'll get another profile. All right, so looking through this flame graph for a second time, there's some other things that look like they're problematic. Like it has extension, it's taking up a lot of time. Git extension is taking up a lot of time. These are coming from the entity itself. And again, thinking about like what file is used the most when the server tick is happening, like the everything extends the entity, right? So if we can actually shave off some time in this entity and make it a little bit faster, I think that can also improve the performance of the server. So get extension is basically looking up inside of a set to see if an extension exists. And if it does, it then loops over all the extensions to return the actual thing. This is super bad. Let's also remove this. I don't want the fallbacks anymore. I really don't think we need those fallbacks. So we're just gonna go ahead and just return if it has that or not. Okay, but this one we could probably refactor. I'll paste it in. I'll say, can you please refactor this to use some type of map so it can just get the extension by the extension key instead of having to loop over all the extensions? Again, I'll probably kick off a plan. We're going to run this and I can kind of inspect the plan. Okay, add extension map. Okay, so it's going to add the extension map, which is what I kind of want. Update add extension, remove extension, the sync extension tracking, refactor get extension method. 
Yeah, all these seems pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just build this. Again, these are really low-hanging fruit refactorings, but they will provide a lot more performance to the server, not having to loop over arrays every single time when I should be using a map to begin with. But then also doing these refactorings will kind of like allow the other things to bubble up to the top of the flame graph. So I can see where all the time is being spent in this uh, the server. So let's just go back to run and debug. Looks like there's a little bug in the back and that's crashing this. I might even go look at the pistol. It looks like the grenade get extension is not working. It's supposed to be looking up the extension and it's saying positionable is not found on entity. We can again just kick this off. Uh, please fix this on the grenade. But I'm guessing if I go to the grenade function, does it not have a positionable on it? Yeah, it's, I think it's missing a positionable. Oh, I think the issue here was I was actually just pushing into an array, but there's actually some type of uh, add extension method that we have to use because I kind of keep track of a dirty bit to know like if the extension has been updated or not so I can sync it over to the front end. It looks like the shotgun ammo also has the same issue. So I might just tell it to refactor all entities. Can you refactor all entities to use the add extension method instead of doing extensions that push directly on the extensions array? All right, so now it's going to go through all my code and just use that helper function instead of modifying the extensions array directly. I think that should fix my, my app. And this is one reason I do like AI. For me to do all this refactoring by hand, it would have taken a lot of time. Going through every single entity and refactoring an old approach to a new approach, it takes a lot of time. And now like you can literally prompt AI to do these like tedious refactorings for you. And the game now works, right? So I know a lot of people hate on AI, but I think uh, those people, they, they just haven't been enlightened yet because there's a lot of things I've been doing with AI and it makes your workflow so much more productive. Yeah, so again, performance, we got to go back and we have to check the performance of the game. So let's run the profiler once more. Go ahead and make sure I can run around and pick some stuff up, pick up some cloth and stuff. All right, so has extension and get extension are still kind of eating up time. I'm curious why uh, this is probably using so much time. It looks like a majority of it is coming from this anonymous function inside of Entity Manager, uh, which is where we filter over a bunch of things. All right, it looks like this is just being called a lot. So this is the main issue of why has extension is so high. It's just it keeps calling it over and over again. So we could probably look at the code and try to figure out, do we even need to call has extension? Because I wonder if everything that you put inside the grid I do believe it needs to be positionable. Uh, so let's just go and look at this one. And then we'll say like, is there an add entity? Get extension, positionable. Yeah, we assume that it's already kind of positionable. So I kind of wonder like, why do we even have this here? We should be able to get rid of it. And I also wonder why are we doing a check on radius, but then we pass radius down here as well. Uh, it might just be kind of unnecessary. Like this is looping over and getting all the the entities in a certain cell and then it's fetching them and making sure they're in within a certain radius and then we can try to see what's actually calling this uh, try shoot at zombie is still being called a lot so survivor let's go to the game server try shoot at zombie we call that and that's calling get entities nearby and then are we doing another distance check we are we do yet another distance check to make sure that we can actually shoot at it so for me, I don't know if we actually need to do this whole distance check. Now for this, sometimes you can refactor filters instead of like doing a callback function every single time. You can just refactor refactor to a traditional for loop. I'll say for of loop. And then we can kick off a profiler again and just see if maybe that reduced how much the get extension slash has extension was. So at the very least, has extension has dropped down. It was like 100 milliseconds last time. Now it's like pretty much lower. Get extension is still being called a lot uh, inside of get nearby entities. But if you want to focus in on has extension, it looks like it's being used here for collatable entities. You could dive into that more. Um, try to shoot at zombies is still eating up a lot of time. Get extension, get nearby entities. That's eating up all the time as well. And that's still coming from the survivor. So I, I guess I'm curious why that's using up so much of that time. I think here, what we could potentially do is that the survivor can only shoot at other zombies, right? So we could add in a filter and we could say entities of zombie. And that could kind of help reduce the amount of uh, distance checks that we have to do. So let's go and kick this off one more time. We'll say we'll run the profiler again. And now that's down to 22 seconds as well. If you click it, that's basically gone from get nearby entities. Okay. So I probably will stop here. I know I did, did some small refactorings, but I do have a lot of commits that I did on this project that I refactored like a ton of stuff. Now this isn't as important when it comes to like web applications. Uh, maybe you have a back and endpoint that you want to just kind of make a little bit faster. That's one approach you can do. But in terms of games, like this is something you definitely have to kind of get used to of like doing flame graphs and diving into where stuff's eating the most time. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of other things I need to optimize here. Like the broadcast event, I think is pretty bad. 
get entities nearby. I need to rethink how I'm doing the spatial grid. Uh, it's just not the most performant. Uh, but there's little things that we can kind of do to kind of improve that. Like, for example, this anonymous for each function. Probably could just make that an inline uh, for loop and that might shave off some time. But there's other higher level changes that we can add in. And by the way, if you guys like the way I use cursor to refactor all that code with basically a single prompt, and you want to learn more about the tips and tricks about using agent decoding, I think it's made me a much more productive and efficient coder. And I think you can learn a lot from the things I've done along the way. So be sure to check out my agentic jumpstart course I'm working on. I have like 10 or 11 videos recorded now. I'm going to keep on recording a bunch of videos. The strategies for prompting and context engineering, which models work the best. Join my waitlist and I'll send out an email when this thing is actually done. All right. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.